Hi! I'm Rhodes. Uh, it never, it always surprises me to see all the new faces every single time that we're together. And I, I don't know how it happens, but it keeps happening. And I like it. Keep doing it. Hi! <coughs> and see you slip in, so anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I already did a little few announcements this morning, but we're going to be talking about grip. Again, this is just like a 3,000 foot view. Um, of the department and how they work with other departments, um, what are some of the main pieces that they use, and then we, uh, so we'll talk to them a little bit and I think we'll migrate outside to kind of be a little more hands-on. So I'll leave it up to you guys, we already introduced them. Um, also film bar merch on the film link tree, if you want. <laughs> uh, that's it, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'll start with the first question. What are, what do you guys, uh, what's your, Name, title, role, and like, what are the main things that you guys do? Got to pick one of us first. I don't think we're we'll going to We'll go from left to right. <laughs> I'm Fess, and I'm a grip. I feel like part of the 12-step program. <laughs> <laughs> when in young man, young person's life, do they say, I want to be a grip? It's hard, hot work. First there, last to leave. It is rewarding. But I do mostly commercials, corporate industrials. I've done some movie stuff, but I they take too long. They take too long to watch. You know, <laughs> it's let alone make. But uh, I've uh, a bit of my background. I rolled my first road case onto a Doobie Brothers stage in 1975, and I'm still pushing road cases. Nice. Um, I do corporate events, um, conventions, trade shows. I've built scenery in this building for five years. 25 years ago, and uh, it's coming full circle. But I do rigging as well. These video walls, uh, I hang these video walls all across the country, uh, convention centers, hotels. Um, I don't do the high steel rigging anymore. Um, it's not that age thing, I guess, but yeah, it is. Um, but that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, Fess. Can you, what is high steel rigging? Uh, climbing up on top of arena, dropping ch uh, motor points, and hauling up light trusses, and now video walls. That's you know that's only come on the scene in the last 15 years or so. But um, uh, the heavy heavy lifting, using one ton, two ton chain chain motors. Um, I also run a camera. They call me Captain Wide Shot. <laughs> Follow the man on the stage. He's at the podium. You're doing a great job. Uh, but I do. Some camera work, but um, I'm grip, I'm grip and rigging, and that's a, a, a passion. Eric. My name is Eric Olson. I am actually a one-man band who does pretty much everything, shoot, light, and rig up the set or the, the things that we use for, for video production, both in um, the corporate world, industrial, narrative, independent films, uh, music videos, those type of things. I've gotten my start in television news about right when they put away the film cameras and introduced video cameras back in the early 80s. A long time ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, so that's how I got my start. But I've always been around cameras. But grip is, as Fess told me today on the phone and reminded me, is basically what it is. It's camera support and light support. That's the technical definition that's what that is camera and lighting support when i say okay i'm gonna gaff which means you set up lights and you've got to have light stands for your units to set up for a for a set may it be a narrative or com, you know commercial or industrial corporate kind of a situation you uh, if i'm call, called out to do that i expect if the production is big enough for a camera department to be there already who has their own grip equipment, a grip truck for camera, you know, I don't combine both light and camera grip. I either have uh, my own camera gear and my own camera grip, or, and then when I show up for a gaffing job, I just bring my lighting support systems. And that's basically what I do. Pass it on to you now, sir. Thanks. Unless there are any questions. Silent group. My name is Jeffrey Griffith. Uh, I'm probably the youngest one on this board a um, little bit so um, I would probably be a lot less traditional than these guys in the sense that I'm all 
90% self-taught besides what I've gotten to learn on sets with people along with them. Um, my background is having worked in LA more on the front of talent side for a while until I realized that the only people that work consistently are the ones behind the camera, not in front. Um, so I've been kind of teaching myself and learning about grip for the last 10 years. Uh, I would call myself a gaffer grip combo um, because I tend to work on smaller shoots that tend to look at like sub $20,000 type shoots. Um, and so I'll come in with a package with my band where I come in with the gaffer's equipment, which is all the light heads, and then I'll come in with grip as well so I can do a full support package for a small production. Um, and so that looks like for me is my way of learning has primarily been I have to buy it in order to learn it. Um, and also I come from the school of YouTube. So uh, most of the things that I'm learning are, a lot of times I'm getting experience on set from people that have more experience, but um, because I haven't had the connections as for as long as most people, my, my learning experience comes from, oh man, I really want that big old stand right there. I'm gonna save up for a while, I'm gonna buy it and figure out how to use it. So, um, so I will also preface it, if you hear something from these guys and then I say the opposite, go with what they said. <laughs> no, because uh, you learn from everybody. Listen yeah. to what everybody says. <clears throat> Information's like food. You ingest it, you digest it. Good food comes out as energy. Bad information <laughs> or food, you know the story. <laughs> so uh, another, listen to everybody. Yeah. Another thing I'll say is that grip is really interesting because there's it is all a terminology. So there are technical names and then there are set names for everything. And every, almost every shoot I've gone, people have different names for everything. So that's a very interesting thing about like the grip department is because it's developed, there's actually, traditionally, film has developed in two areas, New York and the West Coast. And they both develop different languages for <clears throat> grip in both areas. So if you get on a set and one person calls it a duck bill, and one person calls it a quacker, I was gonna, I have one of those here. Um, they're the same thing, just different names. And so there will be some times where you'll get on shoots where somebody's making it sound like they know what they're talking about and they say, go get something and you don't know what they're talking about. It's a very common thing because there's different names for all sorts of stuff. But all that said, you will probably encounter a certain amount of things like we'll probably talk over like some of the most common stuff that you'll see on a film set that especially I'd say around here as the film industry is growing, uh, having a base knowledge because lots of people are going to be asked to do multiple roles on a small film shoot. So once you start getting up to 20, 10 to 20 crew members, you'll be isolated to your department. But as you start getting down to five and three people on a shoot, somebody's gonna yell at you to move a C-stand. So I think especially as a community growing, it's a really good thing for most people to learn what are the basics of film production. Um, so that's, my experience comes from self-growth and learning about all this stuff. Um, but it's cool to be able to sit alongside these guys. Um, second question. What are some of the the main roles that you'll see in this department? Anybody can. Key grip, best boy, <laughs> grips, yeah. dolly grip, carpenter grip. Um, can you explain a little rigging bit grip? About why there are so many different roles? It's just specialized dolly grip, specialized on setting the track up, making sure it's level straight. Focus on just the grip, uh, just the dolly, and that can be the Dana dolly setup that was here. <clears throat> it can be Chapman dollies, could be homemade skate dollies. Um, but there again, it's on the bigger sets with bigger crews. I'm I'm usually key best boy grip, sandwich maker, uh, <laughs> the whole gamut because I've worked. That's my preference is smaller crews. Uh, you know, I, I I've done a few large movies and they're my, I have a very short attention span, so I, I, just, I don't watch movies. I, I saw Nebraska in 2013. That's the last time I've been in a movie theater. And before that was 1975 when The Outlaw Josie Wales came out. <laughs> I, I just, I, it just takes too long. You might describe it, I think the two biggest roles, Key Grip and Best Boy, are probably ones. Key that. Grip is the department head. Just like in any corporation or any manufacturing, the Key Grip is, is the boss of that department. The Best Boy is the one that keeps the Key Grip with his equipment, knows where the equipment is, know what's available to him, um, make sure it's on the truck, make sure it's in working order, uh, and then the grips under that, or the guys that move the sandbags, move the stands, um, tie the knots. Um, knots, knots are very important. I, I have 
cut to cut me off when I get too long because because I I, I have an all day presentation. <laughs> uh, but I will that's keep next it, week, folks. I'll keep it short. Um, but that's the two prominent roles: is the key grip, best boy, and the, which is the assistant department head. As far as I understand, key grip is going to end up being more paperwork officey kind of. A little bit more. They are the best boy is going to the, be more hands on. They are the, the direct liaison to the DP yeah. and the gaffer. Yep. But they're also the engineer. That that I, I need this size stand for that size light. Mm -hmm. You know, generally. Um, on larger sets, it's generally important to let grip do their job and don't touch their stuff unless otherwise told to. It's dangerous. <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of heavy. Say, so, yeah, speak on that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of moving parts. Um, but it's all physics. It's, for every action, there's a reaction. And what goes up comes down. Um, and if you don't know, if you're not sure, it can, it can be dangerous. And, you know, yeah, I'll set that. Yeah, you can move it. Yeah, you can turn that knob. But righty tighty, is the load out there when the C stand's correct? And we'll probably go over setting a C stand, the basics. Yep. I think, you know, FES is really about safety. I think it's important to know, you know, as he said, what goes down, you know, what goes up must come down. I mean, you know, righty tighty. I, I, I preach it all the time when, when one sets up a C stand with a grip arm on it, that if the grip arm is on the wrong side of the grip head, it's going to loosen because it's lefty loosey. You got to be on the right side, and that's just a safety thing. And you know, it's, it's and, I, and I would not call somebody out on it to show that I know more than they do, and I don't know more. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like I said, you learn from everybody. Oh yeah. And if you and if you think that you know everything, you are mistaken. <laughs> I learn every single day yeah. when I'm in my workshop. Today I learned something, um, but the the safety aspect of it. Um, because I, I will now you got my feathers up. <laughs> now I'm a safety. I have my ten hour card, my thirty hour safety. Really safety. Ten hour card, thirty hour Asha card. Um and I am okay, I'm proud of the fact that some people hire me because I'm too expensive and too safe. I'm okay with those. Um but safety is the utmost in grip world. You know, sandbag on everything, even in the studio. It can be a small sandbag, you know, but sandbags. Never underestimate the power of the wind. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of the wind. Repeat with me. Never, Never underestimate, underestimate the power, power of, of the wind. wind. And I'll come back to that. <laughs> um, that that is key in grip. No pun intended. Yeah, I'd say from my perspective, it, it ends up, I've gotten on a lot of shoots where time is super short and too much is being asked of a small crew, which ends up turning into a dangerous situation. And somebody, didn't, somebody, somebody who didn't know what they're doing was asked to crank down a grip head too fast and things happen and something falls over. And I'd say wind, it's actually a very interesting thing, especially on exterior shoots, wind is a very, very large factor that very few people will think about before it gets windy. Um, but, but also I, in yeah. studios and convention centers, the big air handlers turn on, mm. there's wind in a building. And never underestimate the power of the wind. Nice. I think another interesting thing about grip is even if you are on talent side, there's an interesting aspect of working. Most actors are going to be expected to work around grip equipment that may be set up close. Lots of time on bigger shoots, they'll have a, you'll have a wide berth, but something to be aware of as well is just navigation and body awareness. I've, I've seen too many times where somebody doesn't have too much body awareness and they hit a stand. And hopefully somebody like Fess has been around to set it up so it doesn't fall down. That's an interesting thing. It's just, it's just having awareness on a shoot about what somebody else is working with and setting up because for some specific shots, there might be a lot of equipment in order to get one specific shot and then the actor is going to be asked to bring it out. And even if you're working as a PA, you'll have to do the same thing. As you're walking through set, there might be a C stand halfway through the doorway. So now you have to pay attention to where you're standing and walking in order to get through um, safely as well. So I think even if you're not going to work in that department, it's being aware of, of all of the stuff that will be around and all the edges and 
Um, and the fact that most of it should be set up to not fall over, but I would assume that if you touch it, it will fall apart immediately. It's probably the best way to think about it. My favorite grip joke, when somebody walks into a stand, a man walked into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll say it from now on, I hope. A man walked into a bar. I'm going to have to keep that one. Feel free. Does anybody have any questions? Any horror stories? Too many. <laughs> um, got a good one for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh. What, um, I guess, like, knowledge level, like, even if it's an indie or like a bigger set, do you think you have to have to be considered a rip? Do you, like, like, I guess, like, to simplify the question, like, three things would be, like, C-stands, combos, like, what are the, the main things, the main, like, top five things you need to know to be a rip, like, to, starting out, if that makes sense. So. Well, I think it's important for anyone who wants to start out is to go to, um, what is it, uh, you mentioned it earlier, I think it's uh, YTU, go to YTU, it's a great school, ever been there? YTU, <laughs> have you heard of it? She says, yes, I've heard of it. I go there all the time. YouTube University. Nah. They'll teach no. you. Um, I mean, I get, I mean, I watch it every day. They got stuff. I mean, products. I'm a gearhead. I love gear, right? I always know what's coming up. Aperture made an announcement the other day. I was all over it. Um, but I think it's important to know how to, as one who wants to get started, t learn about a C-stand. What does it do? How does it, how do you set one up? How do you collapse one? Because if I have a PA or a PAs on the set who are willing to help and say, I want to help, I'm learning, I'm learning. I said, well, here, here's a ba beefy baby, go set it up for me. And they start turning all these knobs and the thing falls apart and they don't know which knob to turn and how to set one up. Very basic things. And it's okay if one doesn't know and I'd be glad to show them, I teach them. But then again, like he says, and, and Jeffrey also sustains the fact that we got to be safe. You know, we got to know how, they, how they're put together. Uh, there are some C-stands, and hopefully we'll get a little bit of a chance to play with Jeffrey's toys, his chrome here that he brought. There are s s three or four different types of C-stands that are made by different manufacturers, and each one has a different way of getting the turtle base, the legs that you see there, spread apart for them to set up. And then when you collapse one, it goes exactly backwards. So I think those are in, in, you know, uh, things to consider. If you want to get started, know how to set up a light stand period, and then move into a C-stand. A beefy baby is nothing but a heavier duty light stand with three legs and a two riser or a three riser with knobs that will hold it in place. And then you've got um, combos and the slightly larger uh, stands for larger units. And then uh, Jeffrey bought a uh, crank stand that he was given to by uh, a store for being being who you are. An incompetent b and &H yes. photo. Uh customer service person thankfully provided me a free stand because they gave me the wrong one and realized that uh, it was going to be more expensive to send it back. So <laughs> thank and, you, B&H. And you will stand for that? I will stand for that. Good. Don't be afraid to say I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's better to say I don't know than have something bad happen. And it might just be bad like you tear a flag or it might be that flag falls and hits the actor in the head. You got a red knot here. You're done for the day. And, and, just just this, and, <laughs> and as a as a good grip or key grip or best boy grip, they will understand and take the time, and they may say, "I can't explain it right now," but let's come back to it. And I am not afraid to give up information, teaching, uh, you know, because it's all about safety on the set. No running. What's running do for you? Creates a dangerous situation, and it looks like you're panicking. And it causes wind. <laughs> He's getting it. If your client sees you panic, they're going to panic. And in the corporate world, that's not a good thing. So you can walk faster. You can take longer steps. But running is, is really not a good idea. Um, when you go to bring equipment, think ahead. All right, I got a stand. I know, you know, he's probably going to need a sandbag. Well, if you got a stand and a sandbag, does it have a long arm on it? If a C-stand does not have a long arm on it, which we'll go over what that is, it's not a C-stand, it's a stand. 
the long arm cent sentry stand is what it's called, 100 uses. Um, most of the early film days, 20s and 30s, got their terminology from sailing ships. The gaffer was the guy that took the long pole and pulled the sail down. So they moved that into theater. He's the one to pull the backdrops down with the long pole. The grip, the grip was a satchel, a bag with tools that the ship's carpenter carried around. That's a grip, carries all the tools. That's what a grip truck is, big toolbox. You are problem solvers. I need that light up there. I need it safely and I need it quickly. You gotta figure out how to do it and how to do it safely. I think that's an interesting thing about grip department too, is it's, it is a, it is a balancing act of time and safety because mm -hmm. the expectation is every second you slow something down is you're costing somebody more money. Yeah. So the, it's a really interesting thing of like, that will be, if you ever get into a grip department is the expectation is as fast as possible before becoming unsafe. Yes. That's why we have key people Let the director of photography, I guess you all know what a director of photography does and is correct. Yes, hands, most people, yeah. He or she is in charge of, you know, he will talk to the gaffer. He says, this is the look I'm looking for. I want soft light coming from this direction. I want a little bit of scratch coming from behind. Be motivated by whatever the situation is. We have a lookbook. He shows the gaffer a image that may have been pulled from the internet from another film or something. And this is the look we're looking for. And the gaffer would then know exactly what tools to pull, get to create that particular look. If it's a soft look, a soft light, warm, cool, whatever it is, the, the gaffer would know what to pull out of the truck. He then communicates through the walkie to the best boy, go get me this. And then best boy will be working out of the back of a truck and gets, gets the things to a runner. He brings it to the set, then grip will set it up, right? Mm -hmm. Stop me when I'm wrong. And, uh, and then another thing is also when, when you're on the, on the set, on the floor, on, the, on a movie set, uh, it might be corporate, uh, industrial, narrative, doesn't matter. When you're on a set, even this here, he always says the number one tip that he gives to everyone, he says, listen, shut up and listen. Don't be ever ha having a conversation with your buddies about what you did the day before and what kind of movie you're going to shoot or look in your phone or play with your phone. You got to be quiet. Be on standby and listen and keep your eyes open. Make sure that when something, somebody's looking for something that you are right there with it and have things on standby. Always have neg negative on standby. Always have plenty of C-stand ready to go with, with arms and grip heads in place because you might want to have to fly in a flag or a diffuser or something like that. And, and a DP wants that stuff fast. You as a gaffer, whoever you are, has to be managing you guys, your three guys, your grip guys, to be able to get that stuff on set quick fast and do it safely because you want to make sure that your DP is happy with you because if he's not or she's not, he's not going to get you as a gaffer back on the film set. And if you want to work and if you want to make money, make sure that you are providing the service the DP needs for getting his job done because he's listening to who? Who is the DP listening to? Anyone? Director. Very good. So he's the boss, right? He or she is the boss. So it's, it's, it's a... Uh, it's an interesting uh, structure that, that, you know, even the PAs, I mean, if, if you are a PA and you're on a set and you want to learn grippage, what we call it, pay attention, ask questions, but be quiet, <laughs> you know, and don't, don't be running yeah. your mouth all the time. I'd he says that all the time. This is any rule no. is if you can think ahead and you have something ready before someone asks, mm -hmm. you will get invited back. Yeah. Always. Yeah. As long as you didn't set it up before someone asked. I need a double suit, uh, a, a double a net. Double what, do you, net. what do you bring? Yeah. A single and a double. <laughs> that way, yeah. oh, yeah. Right. you're not making another trip back to the truck because, ah, that's too much. Yeah. Or it's not enough. And then you Hollywood so, it. You Hollywood, Hollywood with, with your hands. hands. See him and wait for the DP and then he says, okay, that's great. Don't, don't leave yet because they might change their mind. You stay there with the single in case they want, oh, let's change it to a single because somebody else says, no, I don't think that's the look I want. And then if they decide that, you stand it by, have it, have it handy. And then when they say, okay, we're ready to roll the camera, then you gather up all your extraneous and get it either back to the grip cart or back to the grip truck. So you guys kind of touched on it, but what other departments does the grip interact with? Everyone. Absolutely <laughs> Pretty much. What's it's the heaviest time, thing the grip carries? Which is why it's so important. The art department. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I'd say it is one of the few few uh, positions that you do actually because you will probably interact with. You will go from Our all department? the way to. Well, you'll go from the setup all the way to the actors. Yeah. You will probably, you probably shouldn't be talking to them too much, but you will probably be interacting with them in some way. Um, yeah, every, every, every department. Audio, I forgot my C-stand, or I need a second C-stand, you know, for, for boom. Um, so you, you have to work with every department. You have to prioritize, you know? Yeah, I can get that, but I've got these three <laughs> things to do right here. Or if you send me a person, I'll give you the equipment. You know, you can do that. But, so quick uh, thing too, he, he also said, because there will be a lot of terms that you'll hear and I'll try to stop when, you, so a net is essentially, think this is a silk, a net is the same idea, but it's a black material. It doesn't diffuse the light, it only brings it down. It brings the level of light down without softening it. Without, or changing the shape. Yep. So we got two women on the set. One is Dolly, and then we got Annette. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's as bad as a man walks into a bar. Does anybody have any other questions? That's Otherwise, we can move to looking at some getting hands off. Uh, I had a question about when you were talking about the hierarchy from DP talking to the gaffer, the gaffer talks to the best boy, best boy goes and grabs what's needed. Uh, where best is boy that, to, or gaffer to key. That's, key. Well, that's why I was going to ask. I was going to ask where is the key group in that conversation? That's you? right. I'm sorry. So I told you, please stop me if okay. I make a mistake. And I did make a mistake. I skipped <laughs> over someone. You're right. The key grip, grip, key grip is in charge of the grippage, okay. Every, everything to do with grip. And that is then the best boy who would then be radioed, hey, get me uh, whatever. You know, and he at, brings it in. At the beginning of the day, on a commercial shoot, if you have uh, multiple locations uh, within, within one location, several different frames, very first, early in the morning, the director, the first AD, the um, gaffer, the DP, and the key grip will walk to each site, and so he can be thinking he she. Um, one of the, one of one of the best best boy grips I work with is a girl, a lady, and she's young, but she's worked in a grip rental house in Atlanta for a couple of years, and she probably has loaded and unloaded more grip trucks than I've ever seen. And I, my, I have the utmost respect for this young lady. Um, but we will walk around, and that's when you ask questions. Um, then, then you go to each department and start giving, fanning out those directions. One thing I want to say is um, if Grip ever gives you a tool or some piece of equipment, it is your responsibility to bring it back to them. If you want to get no on Grip's bad side, don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever department you're in, if you borrow something from them, you're responsible for bringing it back. doesn't matter if you're giving it to camera or if it's, you took it, you bring it back. Yeah, like a couple, I would say the couple most common things that people are going to interact with is going to be Apple boxes, which is essentially just a box that can be used for just about anything. Grip tape is also going to be pretty common. Most departments will have grip tape, but the grip department is going to have the most. Um, C stands will be really common. Um, what else are super, super common things to see from the grip department? And flags. So flags are going to Tenders. refer to a lot of different things, but overall they're going to be anything that's kind of similar to a square that will most of the time be referring to a negative, which negative is black material that's going to cut light. So that's going to be probably the most likely things. And silks Con confusion. or diffusions. Yeah. Oh, diffusion. Confusion. Yes, diffusion. Con <laughs> um, as you progress learning more grip, and I, and I do that there, as I was said earlier, um, a lot of cool, funky names for all this equipment. Mm -mm. The best grips don't try to trick you unless, <laughs> unless they're group you know, let's pull a joke on somebody like the left-handed screwdriver you know but uh i will not there's like a clothespin clothespin has five different names you know but if i know that they don't know what it is i ask for a clothespin you know there's there's no need to yeah it's cool you learn the language but you know if you want to get it done fast i need a clothespin so but and then when you come back say you know this is the peg this is C47. Um, there's a couple other names for them. And a good PA will have one on them. <laughs> What's also interesting, I found when we we're on a small, no pay, small budget film set, independent stuff, you know, uh, we have people pitching in. And you'll have three people bringing gear. 
and you have three three different piles of gear. Well, this belongs to Silas. This belongs to Jonathan. This belongs to you know Jeffrey. So I mark all my things. Every. I put, I put my name or my little sticker or whatever on everything I own, from batteries to cables to chargers to to Apple boxes to uh, you know anything that that is any of my of any of value. And everything that I own is very valuable for me because I paid a lot of money for this shit. You know right, what I'm and and a lot of the little small like dolly blocks, dolly wedges. Mm -hmm. um, I, I paint my clothespins back black. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, they get hit into the set if they're if <laughs> yeah. the camera sees them. Yeah. yeah. Second Can't of all, they know that they're mine. Yeah. But even all my dolly wedges have my name on it. I have a I have a little branding iron I put it on there. Yeah. Because it looks like a scrap of wood. Mm -hmm. And if it's a scrap of wood, it's going to get thrown in the trash or thrown in the bushes or. So yeah. put your name on everything. Yeah, I think that's an interesting thing. Is it, there's sometimes it's an assumption of it mm -hmm. looks that's beat true. up so it's not valuable, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Oftentimes there can be things that have been used for years, but that single item could be 500 to to $1,000. And so I think that's something that most of the time I would ask people to be aware of. Yeah, it looks cheap, it looks beat up, but view, value it as if it was $1,000. Because if you walk off with an Apple box, that's another $50 out of my pocket. Yep. Well, now they're sixty day items too. Now they're sixty five dollars a piece. C forty sevens and yep. pieces of wood. And it's not so much that the value of it is now I don't have it. Yeah. Or if you break a piece of equipment, you know, I'm never going to get mad if you come up and say, Hey, I just broke your two thousand dollar stand. I'm not going to get mad at you because you told me. <laughs> if you tell me, I know that I'm not expecting it to be working. If you don't tell me, and then I get to the next job site, you know, then I then I get upset. And it's, it's, I don't get upset. I, I'm an easy going guy. There's a lot of grips, key grips out there that are just ogres. <laughs> ogres are ugly. And they don't have to be. I, I don't, I never understood that. But I, that's my character. You know, I, uh, when I'm, you'll know when I'm serious. I promise you. Okay. Yep. Another thing is about breaking things is if, if you happen to be outside shooting outdoors, and you have lights. A lot of the new lights now are rain safe. You can leave the lamp and the box outside in the rain, but the, the stand, the chrome is not rain safe. It's going to get wet. And if you bring the stuff back in and you put it in the truck wet without wiping it down, it's going to rust. And it's going to, it's going to really make this guy very unhappy because his stuff is going to start rusting and, and he's and not going to like it. So even more true with soft goods, you know, all oh, your yeah. flags, rags. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, soft goods are going to be like but, anything. But tell, but tell us, you know, yeah. Yeah. hey, when you get home, you need to out, take it out in your shop and dry them out. Yeah. Um, because then you get mold. Then when you have a, yeah. a silk like this with big black dots on it, uh, <laughs> you know, from mold and mildew, uh, you know, it affects the, the, the light source. Any questions, anyone? Yeah, what are some things you have on you? Like, what are some tools and also like boots and stuff like that? What do you keep on you? Oh, don't ever wear sandals on a set. Thank you, my don't friend. Ever. I don't care how good no, you think they look. Oh, leather man, flashlight, crescent wrench, uh, tape measure. I carry a big tape measure in my gig bag over there, but always at least a 10 foot tape measure. Um, you measure up to it. Oh, uh, but um, uh, what else? Uh, Some gloves. I, I, I brought my tool belt. Yeah. Well, yeah, we you know that I wear on on a, on a daily basis. And we'll, if you want to go through some of the the basic tools to have with you. Yeah, I think are, are we ready to move over to some equipment? Cool. Well, you want to start with stands? Yeah. 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 I've only got two. So I'll clip on two of you. Jeff, you'll just have to speak up. I'm, I'm a way behind the scenes guy. And what do you mean no money? So, start off with actually. What he just did, I don't know if you saw that. If I may start, I don't yeah. want to put you in a bad spot. <laughs> but if somebody hands you a cease, if I hand you this and you grab it, you're going to grab it like this. I'm going to crush my fingers. Gotcha. So you always want to grab a cease stand with an arm like this. Because if you grab it like this and somebody else gets it, you're going to lose your fingers. So that's, that's one thing that I try to uh, always be mindful of when I grab one of these things is to grab them this way. So um, what's funny is I think that almost everybody is going to have different approaches behind C-stands and stuff. But overall, it's going to come probably from lots of experience and just ways that they've figured out that work well. But the overall concept of a C-stand is just that it's going to have three legs. Lots of times they are not going to have what's called 
uh, combo or a gilbo, uh, gobo head on it. That's um, a stand. Yeah, so this is a stand. Now. This is a C stand. <laughs> um, so just operating one by itself, it's a very simple operation. You've got a twist right there, and then this can go up. Now, something that I like to do with C stands, it's a very or a very simple thing that makes it really easy is if you are asked, there's nine times out of 10, there's always going to be something on top of the C stand. Most of the time it's gonna start getting heavier and heavier because more things will get added onto it. So as you do that, there's gonna be a lot of times where somebody's like, oh man, can we move that two inches to the left? So now you've got a light that's way up there, up at the top. Now, what I like to do is instead of going from halfway up and then halfway up, and now I need to turn it and there's 40 pounds of weight on the top and I have to hold this whole thing up, I will make sure the first top connection is the one that goes up to the top. And now what I can do is all the weight gets to sit on this first connection. That's all I gotta do. Um, it's just a very common, and I think most of this grip stuff, it just comes down to thinking for a second, what is the most efficient thing I can do to make this work for me versus me fighting it? Because um, a lot of times you can get in awkward situations because most of the time you're going to be asked to put these things in weird spots um, in order to make it work right for the shot. So what's interesting is this has a sliding leg on it. Now, <clears throat> that leg, oh yeah, this is a perfect example. You get up to some stairs. Best friend. Wait, what, what position is that in? What was that? The Apple box, what position is that? <laughs> <laughs> Cam knows. Oh man, New York. Which other position? Do you know uh, the other three? One, two, three. Uh, third. I, I, I didn't do good. Uh, <laughs> so what they're referring to is essentially is each, yeah, each direction of the Apple box has got a different name for it. I can't remember it for the life of me. So I'll just tell you. One, two, three, A, B, C. Put it upright. But what would you call it? That's C side, B side, A side. That's so much simpler. Grip to ground connector. <laughs> <laughs> I sit on an apple box because, like I said earlier, I have a short attention span. When the camera's rolling, the best will start walking around and walk into the frame. So I plant. Um, but that, that's a step. You know, you can use it to reach up and adjust something. But B, C, A. And there is New York, California, and <laughs> Chicago. There's another state, right? Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Um, all that to say, what's interesting is, yeah, Apple boxes are probably going to be one of the second most common things that you'll see around a film set is because they're incredibly useful because they are so freaking strong. I've seen people drive trucks over them. They're used for all sorts. I mean, almost close to indestructible, I would say. Um, now, not fire retardant, but close to indestructible. Um, Back to the C-stand, so a lot of your most common C-stands are going to have this sliding leg on it because a lot of times you get into spots where you're on stairs or you're on some ground or whatever. Um, so if somebody is asking you to get a C-stand prepped on it, one of the first things I'm going to ask somebody to do once they set it is first off is check the, if it is upright because one of the biggest things that can happen is if somebody sets one of these up, this thing is leaning all the way off to the side. You start sticking the light up at the top, and now the center of gravity is going to be way over there. What's going to happen? It's going to go all over the place. So, so the, the, the grip or key grip, best boy will ask you to, to plumb. And the best way to plumb one is to stand away from it. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, because you can, you can visually see it better away from it than you're stand, when you're standing there holding it. Yeah, and it's, and it's obviously the most practical. And what's great about that is that's the most practical and easy. You don't have to go get a a level, put it on the thing. What is the simplest way, quick, f simplest, fastest way? I'm gonna walk up, figure it out, and maybe walk a little bit back and forth, yep. and then you'll or, be ready to go. My, my plumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're especially. Standing over there. Yep. Help me out. Yeah, I think also crew communication, because a lot of times you're gonna be put into positions where now I've got five boxes around me, I'm the only person in place, I put this thing up. Nine times out of ten, you should have a crew member around you, so at, being able to vocalize, ask for help. Um, that's going to be a really big thing because a lot of times let's say this thing is up here I've got somebody on the ledge above me, and I'm sitting here f messing with it I could just very quickly go hey George can you adjust that grip head for me explain it out? Um, so I think being able to communicate with crew members that are next to you to be able to quickly and efficiently do stuff 
is also a really key thing as well. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. In that situation, would you still put a C stand on the highest leg? In that situation, uh, a C stand, a sandbag, absolutely up there. On the oh yeah. Way up top. Yeah, I would, I would add the the weight up on this. I would probably because now we're getting into a situation where the center of gravity of this whole thing is getting higher and higher. So yeah, you can put your sandbag up there, but I would probably put it on the bottom as well because now it's getting more precarious because it's not sitting on flat ground. So the more you want to start paying attention to what's happening around it. But yes, overall, what's common as you do sandbags as well is if you'll see there are three different heights on this C, on this, uh, C stand. You've got the highest, you've got a medium height, and the bottom. <clears throat> what's a pretty common thing? Do we have any sandbags around? Do you have any? Yeah. Oh, sweet, a sandbag. So, with the sandbag, one thing that's fairly common that you'll see is someone will put this on the bottom leg. Now, do you guys observe anything about this setup right now? <laughs> it's not touching the, the leg. No. So, before it ever even stops anything, my stand can get 45 degrees before anything happens. So, that is a very common mistake, which... Here again, as Fess said, most people are not going to, if this is your first time setting up, most people are not going to get mad at you. Now, if it's like you're, you've been on 700 films, you do that, somebody's probably going to make fun of you. But You won't make it to 700 films. <laughs> yeah, you probably won't. Um, so what you want to do when you bring a, a sandbag over to a C-stand, you look for that highest leg first. You set it on there. Now, what's interesting is this is, I'm pretty sure this is what you'd call a shot bag, right? The bigger ones? That's sand, Oh, so shot would be, yeah, shot would be where it's actually filled with little metal balls. This is still a stand bag. But because this sandbag is so big, I've still got some room. The next thing I would do personally is I'd grab this guy, get this up to the height that I want, and set it right on there. So now I know this weight is pulling down. Is that what you'd probably do? How would you uh, do that? Before I'd go to high because then you've got a higher center of gravity. Yeah. I'd probably cradle it around the bottom. Oh, nice. Like that. Yeah. yeah. But you want to put it on the highest leg, just like your arm. You want your arm out over the, you go in there. Yeah, yeah. That was the last step. As he was just about to mention, is that once we start get turning this into a century stand or a C stand, is as you start adding weight onto these guys. So we have our weight on the bottom now. I'm going to pull out this arm. And so looks pretty strong it's all metal right as soon as i go here and i start pulling down that took no effort at all so in order to avoid that one of the easiest things you can do turn it so your highest leg if we look at this guy it's got three different sides find your highest leg and extend over that highest leg now when i go to pull this thing down got all that strength and another thing that I did on this guy is if you see on this grip head there's a couple different ways you can spin it now I want to put this this is kind of getting into the micromanagement of things is I want to put this so that when I'm turning righty tighty that's the direction the weight is going because if I do this loose and I go the other way I just get it enough that it kind of holds a little bit if I pull down now it's just going to loosen itself right up. But if I turn this guy around, I go the other direction. I just do it tight enough that it goes in. It will tighten itself down. It's not doing a perfect job for me. But it will, just by pure gravity and physics, it will kind of tighten itself up. Now, a lot of times if you tighten this thing down good enough, even if it's on the wrong side, it's going to hold. But that is just a principle. Get, get in the habit. Orient yourself to the C-stand, arms that way, you're facing the turn, the neural knot. Yep. Yep, so think of it, you're using your right, most people are right-handed, righty-tighty, right side, put everything onto the right side. Just think about gravity here, and physics. Yep. You know, it's it's going to pull down, so if you're tightening it, yeah. Yep, exactly. So. And never underestimate the power of the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Should we say it again? Yes. Never, Never underestimate, underestimate the power of the wind. Y'all will thank you someday. <laughs> Especially after you had a bunch of beans, right? Right. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, that is kind of the basis of a C-stand. 
that's going to be really, especially if it's, even as a PA, a lot of times on a small shoot, a PA is probably going to be asked to move a C-stand, get it set up. Um, and then, uh, what do you call these heads? Drip heads, gobo head. Which is inch. interesting because a gobo head is also something that a gaffer uses that is completely different. It is for projecting mounts. So there's a lot of times that the same name in a different environment means something different. So if you feel confused, everybody is. Could each individual thing be called a knuckle or is a knuckle something else? Oh, it can be. Yeah. yeah so like I would call this a knuckle. So grip head, gobo, knuckle for all uh, terms. And I think they're about $10 now, but call up Matthews and say, I want to buy a Matthews catalog. It gives you the, oh. the and Matthews also puts out on their website, Griptionary. It's all, it's Griptionary, I like pages that. of grip terminology. But the knuckle, to answer your question, is this, just this thing here, that's the knuckle. So when somebody says, I want all my knuckles to face the same way, they're talking about these little knobs right here. Those are the knuckles. Yeah. So when you when you collapse the C-stand with with the arm and the gobos, uh, uh, gobo grip heads, whatever you call them, on them, you want to make sure all the knuckles are facing the same way, usually. I mean, it's, again, micromanaging. It's just being tidy and neat and everything like that. Another thing that I want to point or add to, to the uh, thing that Jeffrey was talking about is when you're setting up a stand, just a stand with just a light, if you can give the, uh, is to when you when you start setting up a light instead of doing this and then somebody <laughs> says can you raise it a little bit higher and then you can't reach this you always want to start on the first riser this is a two riser stand this is a little bit of has been weathered a bit has it not that's exactly what's happened always start on this one here when you hear that click i always go back like a little bit yes, go, at least go a little bit back you know and then tighten and then and then do your second one really, here eric do you want to show what happens when you go all the way all the way up without going back down what happens? Uh, they tend to be loose. Yeah. Or at least on this one. If you yeah, on the, on the thinner the ones, yes. If you go all the way up, you might find it to be a little bit uh, wobbly. At a little time. wobbly. Uh, that one's well, this has been weathered very well. <laughs> but generally speaking, yeah, I always go back just a little bit on both of these things. But always start on the top one first. Pipe into the lower pipe so it gives you more rigidity. Right, exactly. Um, you're going to go over the types of stand bases. Go for it. Three types of stand. you got a fixed base. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fixed base, which has no no sliding leg. You got a turtle base in here? That one is a turtle base right there. Turtle base. Now you take your big light, put it down there, put your other grip. Baby pin, junior receiver. Uh, so junior receiver. Yeah, there we go. So pretend this is a whole light right here. There we go. Now I got it on the floor. Yep. And then you, we, that was the, the mountain leg, the sliding leg, uh, rocky mountain leg. But then, and then there's the fixed base, which has no, it just folds out. Yes. I, I don't know if we have one in here. But that's the three, three kind of bases. So. Yeah, totally random. I don't want to. So what you just saw him back into that, oh, my God. I do that all the time. I'm, not, I'm talking to somebody, and I'm moving. So probably another big thing on set is if you're talking to somebody and moving backwards, guaranteed a C-stand that was far away will suddenly creep up behind you. Um, and, and, and a sandbag on it, not safety first, but it also, you said, notice when I kicked it, now we've got to reset the light. You know, so if, if there's a bag on it, 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 it's less likely to move. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you use human sandbags too, right? <laughs> so if you hear the wood, can oh, you yeah. Hollywood that? That pretty much just means that you are so expendable that you are just as cheap as how Hollywood has people sometimes. No, I don't know where that term came around from. But Hollywood essentially will normally mean, hey, it's going to take too much time to get this flag or whatever onto a stand. Can you come and stand and hold it for us in one spot? Um, so if somebody comes up and they're like, hey, can we get somebody to Hollywood this flag or this bounce or whatever? That means they're just looking for a warm body to hold something. And a motion Hollywood or a moving Hollywood is following the dolly or yep. following the camera motion to the guys on the shoulder. Yeah. And here again, most of the time on a shoot, if you look, if, if you're sitting there being like, oh, I don't know what's going on, all you have to do is just ask somebody, what do you mean by Hollywood? Any reasonable person is going to quickly be like, oh, that just means can you go grab that for me and hold it for us? You want to Hollywood that for me? 
That's what he's talking That's about. It. Just hold him. You can a human light stand. Yeah, and, and get to where you can see around it, so you see. Yeah. Uh, use the shiny so you can. Yeah, if you want to use a reflector like the shiny board. See how the lights uh, put it on somebody's shirt. Right there. That's, that's next month, class. Yeah, but oh, that's a, right. A grip is still going to be asked to do this most likely. It's or a, or a PA would set. most likely. So it's like, hey, we want to put some light onto the side of Chad. So now we don't have very harsh light. It's kind of the regular thing, but something as shiny as this, if I just go, boom, look at how, how much his face just lit up. Grip, camera and lighting support. Non-electric control of light. Bounce it, diffuse it, soften it, heat it up. Non-electric control. Yeah. Um, basic grip. It's probably one of the most common ones that are going to have way too many names. What would you call that one, Eric? A quacker. Quacker. That's what I call it. What's the name on it? It's got it on there. It says Impact. M R S. Plate clamp. Plate clamp. So when you were talking about the uh, the grip heads, again, if you have an arm with a grip head on it, again, it needs to be on the right side, right? So if you're putting something in, like the qu quacker, or what do you call it? It'll go in there eventually. I never heard that. <laughs> so you can set it up either, you know, any way you like. Learn something new every day. Throw on that on So there. another thing, like let's say you're watching Eric set that up. You can probably presume if he pulled out that quacker, he's probably going to ask for a bead board right after that. So if you're a really good grip, you want to keep working, you're going to go get that bead board before he, it probably will be somewhere nearby on set. Or you'd probably bring, or bring it, it with you. If you have to run to the truck and never go to the truck empty handed, if there's something, if it's not working, it's jerking. Yeah. Because you know? um, the, essentially the principle is two. Is, it might have felt like, oh my gosh, that was 30 seconds. Why do I need to see 30 seconds? 30 seconds. 120 times in a day, which is probably reasonable that you'd have 120 requests, is a full hour of lost time. So, ev like literally a 10 second squeeze down of time over the course of 200 times in a day, you can save the whole production 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. Which, if you think about it, once you have 20 people working on a set and each one of those people are making 100 bucks an hour, bingo, you just save production an entire like $2,000 by you speeding up. Now, you have to be safe. There is no excuse to have done something unsafe and running. Like, I, I'm actually a culprit of running every once in a while because I want to get stuff done, which is really bad. But never compromise safety while understanding if you can speed something up. And you, if you save production money, they will invite you back. And let's touch on safety because I'm, I'm a safety jerk. If you're ever on a set and you see something and it's not safe and you are uncomfortable, and I don't care if it's a personal safety thing, or community safety, you speak up. Yeah. And, if, and if you are afraid to say something, there is an organization organization called Safety for Sarah. I don't know if you'll know the story about Sarah Jones. She was killed on a railroad track down around Savannah because the director said the show must go on and they didn't have permission to be there. Her parents established Safety for Sarah and you can step away from set at your break call them up and say, hey, we're not supposed to be where we're, we're we are where we're not supposed to be. And hmm. you never have to be the, the culprit that made the call. But so remember safety for Sarah, because it's, it's a group effort. You know, if somebody gets hurt bad, uh, your, your productions, bad things are going to happen. Look at what happened to the rush set. You know, you had, you had some of the top pros in the country on that set. And somebody got shot and killed. Yeah, if and you ever feel like you're uncomfortable doing something or something looks unsafe, you have full liberty to speak up. Speak up, and if you're, if everybody says hey, you're the bad guy, safety for Sarah. Remember that. Yeah. And generally, the, the other protocol, thing though, is to to say something yes. to your department head, and generally the key grip on any motion picture is the safety. Yes. Kind of safety on that the is correct. Yeah. The other thing is too is that a lot of times too it just comes from somebody being stressed out and asked to do something too quickly so they're going to push people to do it faster. Now majority of the time I've seen unsafe things from people it's not because they actively want to be unsafe it's because they were being pushed too hard and just your just you asking the question of hey is that very safe can we do something better will probably help them recognize oh yeah if we Absolutely. slow down for a bit 
we can make this five times. Never worse. be afraid to speak up. Yeah. I, I, I have personally never been on a set where somebody didn't take safety seriously, even if they weren't being safe themselves. As soon as you mention it to almost any crew member, they will recognize it and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's go grab some rope. One of the most common carpets is ladder safety. Those mm -hmm. top two steps are mm -hmm. a misnomer. Those top two steps are not steps. <laughs> and that, that's why a grip truck carries a four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So we don't, I think we only keep saying that because it's such a like I I would rather never work a day in another day if it means that I get to keep somebody from getting hurt and losing a limb or losing their life. There's no reason that should happen. It tends to be just entertainment that we're making. Nobody should get hurt. Um, so that's the basics of C stand. I think that once we're done, what I'll do is I'll pull out my whole C stand cart because I would love for you guys just try it out like. Believe me, you could throw this thing on the ground. It probably won't break. And if it does, I can buy a new one. It's great. These ones need to go anywhere. But if it breaks, what do you do? Jeff, how I broke it. Oh. Exactly. Gosh. What am I going to do? I'm going to get pissed off. Can you, uh, yeah. can you speak to the bases? Because I know they all open differently. And yeah. Really so the <coughs> common for myself is I like to Here, be this. able to. Oh, you thank you. Are you sure? I'm going to stick this on real quick. Woo. Um, so... Uh, there's a couple different type of C-stand bases. I only have two with me right now, but these are probably some of the most common that you'll see. So this is the turtle, band, turtle base, um, which what happens on this guy, if you can see, there's a little thing that says pull up. Now this is new enough that this still is on here, but you probably won't see it if it's old enough. Pull this guy up. What I like to do, just let it spin and then it'll lock. Now, the idea behind these guys yeah. as well is I'll put this up on my shoulder. Um, and as, as you saw, the idea behind what I just did was efficiency. I don't want to sit there and go, all of that. I can, with enough time, this is here again. It's just, it yeah. what was that? You still did it quicker. Yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> um, but I'm always, I'm always, when I, every, every time I pull one of these out, I am trying to think about, like, how can I do this a little bit better? Because doing it a thousand times a little bit better will make me real good. Is I can just know that friction-wise, this arm is going to come down. So if I go, boom. I can immediately do it. Cause what happens if I spend 15 seconds setting up my C stand over the course of a day, I could have cost production $2,000 over a C stand. So as I can figure out faster and more efficient ways of getting this ready, getting it out to set <coughs> is gonna help everybody. Um, if you are doing it like this, you're probably gonna be inside of a house or a small location. And what happens if I go without looking, I'm gonna take Eric out. What was that? Hot points. If you're walking through a doorway or something else, and you, the biggest thing is that you want to be able to let somebody know who is behind a certain area. If Eric's behind the wall and I'm coming through, and especially too, what's happening? You're probably rushing. You want to help production out, but you're moving quickly. So if you just call it out, you vocalize what's going on. Hey, hot points as I'm coming through a doorway, you can save somebody getting hit in the face. And make or, it loud enough to be heard all yep. over the set. Points and hot points, the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, hot, hot stuff, po points. Look you, out. Yeah, you can ju even just common words are like, hey guys, I'm coming through. Like, you don't have to sound all fancy and stuff. You can just say you something super common. <laughs> yeah, you could. Um, we could just make the whole film world more confusing. The other thing to um, <clears throat> think about with it as well is um, behind you. Most of the time you're going to be thinking about what's in front of you because you're moving there. But if you start going through a doorway and you're twisting, you have a lot of opportunity to wipe people out. The other thing is also a lot of times you might be inside of somebody's house or a personal place where if you damage it, you should what? Tell somebody that you damaged something during the time that you were there. Because um, a lot of times production will have insurance and some other stuff in order to paint a house. Um, and I know homeowners will probably not be super stoked if you put a hole in their wall. Um, so yeah, so this is, that's a turtle stand right there. This next one. Take this off. Is what's called a Rocky Mountain leg, um, and I'm guessing that term just comes from the fact that if you are on a hill, this leg allows you to get onto a uneven surface. So what's interesting about this one, when I put this guy down, there are three, each one of these legs work slightly differently. Top leg has this little lever on top of it. The second leg actually has a, um, it's like a little spring mechanism underneath, and then this last leg is attached. So 
This is the second type of C-stand. So each one of these legs have a different thing going on. So with this one, what I would do is I would loosen this guy up, let it fall down, and then pull the last leg in with force and tighten this guy up before I move it. Now the other thing you can see is I'm keeping this arm up and on. I'm probably gonna try to set it above, but now the other thing that I've got going on is I have a little bit of extension as well on the back of this, probably before I move it. So I just wanna bring this guy down real quick, just to make it a little bit more safe. The more compact you can make something before you move it, it's probably gonna be a lot safer. So then I come back before I set this thing up, I'm gonna pull that bottom leg, swing this out, and I just lost production $2,000 because I took too No. Um, so the basics of C-stands probably be that. You want to show uh, Different sizes. 20 oh, inch, yeah. 40 inch, 60 inch. Now, I personally actually haven't encountered any of those sizes because I'm on super cheap sets. Uh, but, the little yeah. ones, uh, they're in slang. It's called Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman. <laughs> uh, and no offense, Gary. Um, but they're a 20 inch stand uh, for getting in small, tight places. Uh, and then the 60 inch, um, most of the time I use mine for scenery. Uh, it's because you start running a light up that high, you want to go to either a beefy baby with a triple riser. So a or, 60 inch is probably going to be. Yeah, you go to a heavier stand. Close to, well, I should know how to run my own equipment. Eh? This is embarrassing. I know, right? <laughs> it's a learning. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that for a little bit. But anyways. That's a, that's a roller, high roller? Is that a high roller? Uh, no, this is a crank, oh, crank stand. Roller. Oh, the next this, one. This one's a high roller. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's the basics of the, the C stands there. So as you go up, you've got a couple different things that are going on. This is what is most people will call a lollipop. Now, what would you end up using a lollipop for? Uh, putting a four by flag on. And then what's a flag? Uh, four by frame, um, flag diffusion. Flags are solid. Flags are a generic overall, <laughs> but you got solids, diffusions, and nets. Net slows the light down. Diffusion confuses. I mean, those photons coming from the sun, it confuses them. Just like these lights up here, it's pushing it through that silk, and it, it diffuses. It makes it softer. Yeah. Um, you can probably tell the difference if you can catch some of that light. Well, you got a teaser up there, but if you catch a light, and then move your hand in front of it, you can immediately... So, Rand, I don't know if you heard, he just said teaser. So that's another random term. That black um, diffusion up there, he referred to as a teaser. I wouldn't call it that. I would call it just more negative. Well, I, unfortunately, I do a lot of theater, too. Is that a theater term? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. You got borders, yeah. teasers, legs. I didn't know that. Theater, um. theater doesn't pay much. You also want to go out of getting stuff out of the truck, out of the van yeah, I'll, I'll do that right after we, we hit, the, but that is going to be a big thing for me, at least for me on a small production where I'm not going to actually have a grip team. Most of the time, if I had a grip team, they'd probably be able to do this, but on a small production, because I also have a lot of other stuff, like I have walkie talkies, I have water, I'll have sorts, all sorts of stuff, is that um, if there's 10 different people on set that are coming out to the van and grabbing 10 different things, and at the end of the day, I now have the entire truck outside of my vehicle, and the day finishes, and I have 10 people who aren't taking responsibility for the 10 things that came out. Now, most likely all of production is going to wait on one person cleaning up that truck. So one of my biggest things is going to be ask somebody, if you pulled it off the truck, go find it and put it back on the truck. Because it's probably going to move as well. You might pull out an Apple box or something else and it's going to move around all day. Keep an eye, try to figure out where it went um, and be responsible to put that thing back on because it's not just about the person who owns the truck, you're actually gonna get off that set quicker the faster everything gets put back on. Um, loading the truck. Every time you move a stack of sandbags, count them. Every mm. single time. Sandbags, yeah. they're up to $50 a piece or more, <laughs> plus yeah. shipping. And if you start, I need 10 sandbags, you know what it costs to ship that? Um, so count them. If, you, if, you, if you're missing one, speak up. And it's, it's a hard pill to swallow, but you lose stuff, you know, especially if you're outdoors, throw them in the bushes, <laughs> leave them in hospitals on top of duck, ducks. I still got one down <laughs> in, in the Greenville hospital system somewhere. I've, I've gone to a location before and came back and realized, oh, 
I left that there two months ago because <laughs> yep. it was just a little random thing that's up. It's probably going to be like a little clamp or something. But. My favorite sandbag joke is somebody broke into my trailer and left me four more sandbags because they are a pain in the butt to move. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, so I keep my van in my driveway, and my wife's always wondering if something's going to walk away. And I was like, if they can walk away with it, they, uh, they might deserve it. Anyways. They did break into my trailer and my shop. Luckily, the police, even the policeman said, what is this stuff? <laughs> you know, they, it's not power tools, so they, they can't take it to the pawn shop. Um, so it's such a specialized industry. Yeah. So uh, this next stand that I'm on right now is uh, your pretty average combo stand. Now, the way that I understand that it's called a combo stand is because you actually have two different types of heads on the top of this. You have a baby receiver up here and a junior receiver, which is this guy right here. So now I have the ability to do two different types of things. Interesting thing you can do with these guys. Yeah, is it this one? No. Yeah, why don't, I'm going to pass around, I'll wait on this guy. But, yeah, because uh, when you start passing. Yeah, why don't you say, so that is a lollipop. Four and a half inch grip head. Which is probably, it's a more technical term, but you, I don't personally hear that around uh, very often. Lollipop. Yeah, and a grip head. Or but a if you order them from Matthew or from anybody, that's what it's going to be called. Yeah. Uh, no, neither of those have a junior pin. No, that's a junior. Oh, have sorry, a baby. yeah. Baby that's a baby pin. pin, junior receiver. Yep. Baby, junior, are there any other sizes? Senior. That's the basics. Senior. This yeah. is five eighths, and this is one and an eighth. You, when you buy um, aluminum rods, if you, when you start rigging on cars and stuff, that's the two sizes you'll buy, one and an eighth and, and five eighths. Um, and aluminum, always buy Alcoa 6061, it's high strength. It's what they use in roll bar cages and race cars. So and that's your magic number, 6061. Interesting. I mean, I, I, so I actually bought some stock of um, square piping, and I didn't know that, and I think I didn't get the right stuff. So next time I'll contact you. If you buy it at Home Depot, it's probably not the right stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, so the principle behind a uh, combo stand is also very similar, as um, Eric pointed out. Start with the top. What's interesting is, so once you start getting to this side, you are probably also getting to a much larger size of light as well. So now you want to be conscious of how you're even lifting this as well. Because if you just try to go for it, you can, you can actually injure yourself trying to lift up something that's too heavy. So being able to make sure you're planted, you should have sandbags on this before you move it and make sure you're using your upper body muscles to get that thing in place. Another thing, once you get it up there, Tighten this thing down and be sure it's tight. It's a very scary thing to get something up here, not think enough and let go and have it smashed down. Cause that's a, that is actually a very common injury. Very is common. You got it up. What was that? You ever done that? I yes. actually haven't. Lots. He has, I haven't. Um, well, cause normally if that starts happening, I scream and run away. Um, which is a very effective tactic, whether you're in a fight or in the grip department. Um, <clears throat> You won't get paid more, but at least you got out of the situation. Uh, so you get it up, which is obviously really easy right there with, with nothing on the head. You can get this guy up there like that. <laughs> Another thing, I just kind of did the wrong thing. I went to the top. I'm just going to say it again, even though Eric said it. So you get to the top, and you just want to bring it down by just about an inch. Because what he was saying is that if I get this up to the top, now there's only a little bit amount of metal between it's being able to sway back and forth. Whereas if I drop it down, there's more metal here to keep it from swaying. Now, another interesting thing is I'm gonna put a C stand all the way up at the top. And let's just watch the top of these two things. Now, watch, I can reach farther with this guy, but look at that. That is a lot of sway up at the top there. Versus this combo stand. That's about it that I can get. So the reason why you're gonna get some of these bigger stands is because you just wanna be more safe. Up at the top, it's gonna to be more secure. And if you wanna really get a high with these things, you can take this, this shaft out of the turtle base and put that in the junior, and then you have a little bit of extension and get even higher. But then again, you wanna make sure that you put a nice lightweight lamp on here, not something like Or what, what I, I use that a lot, but usually it's in a, manufacturing plant where the DP wants to kill the overhead light, mm -hmm. you put a flag on it 
and you you can run that thing right up to the light and and kill it. Yeah, but but uh, never yeah. underestimate the power to wind. Wait wait wait, should we all say it again? Never, never underestimate, underestimate the power, power of wind. wind. That one I've seen way too many times, and I've broken personal equipment with it. Um, so something interesting that uh, Chad just pointed out, this little loop right here is for something that you can do, which is a safety chain, which you can put a chain around, put it onto your light. So even, hopefully, the light will never come out of here. But if it somehow did, you could have an extra chain on here. So if it fell, it has a second um, option to uh, cling on to, um, which uh, hopefully you'd never see that in your lifetime. Um, one last thing that I'll point out with this is on, you probably want to talk to the whoever owns the equipment before you do it, but a lot of these stands are designed so that you, as long as you have this tightened up, you need to get up there. You can put your foot on here, get up and do what you need. Yep. However, I would check with whoever has the equipment because there's newer and cheaper models that get made and some of them can't support that. So before you assume that it's strong enough, I would probably talk to the owner who has it. And that's just a quick conversation of, hey, can I stand on this C stand or stand on this combo stand? And they'll very quickly be like, yeah, you're good to go. Or be like, no, stay on the ground while you're doing that. <clears throat> uh, quick note about mountain legs. On the C stand, you want the mountain leg uphill. On these, you want the mountain leg on the downhill. Yep. So if per se, we, uh, we probably yeah, can't demonstrate. Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. Half, half full. So, um, half. as what you saw with the C stand, we would have gone the opposite direction. Is it plumb? This. Oh yeah, can I get somebody to help me? Tell me, Cameron, am I? A little more, right there. There you go, cool. And how quick was that? Instead of me walking away, I found the quickest alternative, which was asking yep. Cam. Use what the I can buddy do system. Quick. Yep. So, that's, uh, that's the basics of a combo stand. This is a high roller. Now what's interesting on this guy is I actually have wheels on this one because especially if you're in a studio environment, one of the nicest things to do is instead of, because you're probably gonna, if you start rigging these things up, you might have up to a hundred pounds on top of something like this. And the unfortunate thing about a hundred pounds up at the top is it's not gonna move easy. Now the nice thing about something like this is that maybe you don't have to take the whole thing down, but at least you just bring the center of weight down. And with these wheels, you can move it around, especially in a studio environment. It's pretty common. Um, did you see how it wobbled when he moved it? To, to avoid that, make, make your, your spreaders, make them level. Uh oh. Yep. Now the wheels are 90 degrees. Well, yep. Not quite. I mean, there are some adjustment screws. Wow. Get into yeah, I'd have to. What? Yeah, you have to get them. Adjusted. I didn't set them for the wide length. I, I got yeah. you. Yeah. So, but as you was saying, though, that would make things a lot safer. If I reset these wheels. One? Coupo. Yeah. Um, if I reset these wheels, I could bring it out. So this is, this is the less desirable way to have one of these set up. Um, but yeah, so this has wheels on the bottom. Now what's interesting is this has a lollipop connected up at the top. Let's see if we have enough room. I think this guy goes up 20 feet. So I'm going to secure this down. Actually, Fez, could you get me a sandbag on this guy? Because another thing is if you start having stuff on top, you want to be aware that if wind's around and whatever, I don't want to walk away from a heavy stand. So real quick, let's just see how high I can get this thing. We'll see if we max out the studio. You're there. Oh, not quite. The studio stands the test. Um, but yeah, and uh, pro I will be honest, I will probably never put a light that high up. There's no reason outside of being in a studio where I could connect it onto something. This is a very dangerous you're, way. You're, you're more, more likely to put grip. Yeah. Up there, flags. Um, Have you ever done that outside that high before? Uh, yeah. Did I like it? No. <laughs> he gives you the willies, man. Like He's, that uh, that he, the only option in that situation. Yeah, if you go that high, put tie line on it. Put three three tie lines and tie, them to, tie it to a car, tie it to a fire hydrant, to a tree. <laughs> yeah, it, but like as you saw, as I got it up there, we were close to one of those poles. So if you got a ladder in here, I could have attached tie, tie it. it off to that. Sure. Yep. So now I still got it up there and everything, but cool. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, we're going to stop recording, but I think they're going to open up the trunk and you guys can take a look at that. For Not a the bit. trunk. That sounds like I've got a dead body. The truck. <laughs> the truck. Okay. <laughs>
Um, he does have a dead body. We actually filmed it. <clears throat> um, if you haven't seen that, you should go see it. Um, but thank you guys for coming out. Um, hopefully you learned some cool things and some safety. And uh, I think this stuff is to play with. Yeah. So yep. all this that's out, I, and don't just observe it. Like literally pick it up, play around with it. Because if you get you know on how a heavy set, it is? Yeah. If you get on a set with me and you've got a little bit more experience with a C-stand, it's great. I'd rather have one of these broken than have somebody who's inexperienced. So. Cool. If you break it, tell me. If you break it, tell me. And Actually, if you break it, I'll be fairly impressed because these are fairly strong. Thank you, Will, and 98 Central and Pronk for hosting us and everything. Thanks.